The final area we're going to discuss that concerns reproduction has to do with the difficulties that a shift in our posture brought for childbirth. Human childbirth is extremely difficult because the pelvis has been modified for upright bipedal walking. Maternal mortality has only recently declined in developed countries and it remains high in undeveloped countries. So there is a real cost to childbirth. It's dangerous for mothers. The female pelvis constrains brain size at birth. And it also means that in order to get through the birth canal, the infant head must rotate and it can exit directly in chimpanzees. Most human infants are therefore born facing backward, whereas in other primates they are born facing forward. This means that the mother is not in as good a position to help clear the baby's nostrils and help it breathe when it first comes out. So this may imply that females have had assistance during birth for a very long time in our evolutionary history. Now first let's take a look at uh, maternal mortality. So this is maternal deaths per 100,000. This is a log scale over here. Maternal deaths from other causes are staying fairly steady, but from puerperal fever, maternal deaths started to, to decline in the 30s, and that's gone down nearly to zero as a result of antibiotic use. So much of the decline from puerperal fever, which is the infection that can result in the uterus after childbirth, has been controlled by antibiotics, but maternal mortality remains significant in developing countries. So maternal, childbirth is costly. It's a risky business. The difficulty in human childbirth results both from the fact that we now walk upright. You can see the remodeling here of the hip, which is indicated in orange, and the fact that our brains have increased in size and our babies have large heads. So it is harder for a baby to get through the human pelvis than it is for a chimpanzee offspring to get through the chimpanzee pelvis. Bipedalism preceded the narrow birth canal. We know that Sahelanthropus was probably bipedal about seven million years ago. Australopithecus was bipedal. It was small brain. It was probably frugivorous. The narrow birth canal evolved in Homo habilis about two million years ago. Now, if we, if we look at the cranium of an infant in the birth canal, it's sketched here in gray, and the diameter of the birth canal is sketched in light orange. What we see is the infant cranium could not be any larger and still fit in the birth canal. It is stretching the birth canal to its limits. The rotation of the infant head during birth suggests that help had, at birth has long been needed. So bipedalism originated in Australopithecus or earlier, and the rotation of the infant head in the birth canal causes humans to be born facing backward. In other primates, the mother can actually reach down and clean the nose of the infant to help it because it is being born facing forward. So she can actually look down at it as it is coming out of the birth canal and clean out its nostrils. Human mothers and infants then benefit from uh, having a midwife or a duena at birth who can catch the baby and clean its nose. So there is evidence in our own pattern at birth of our increased sociality and this could very well be done by sisters, aunts, or grandmothers. It's notable that human brains are actually small at birth relative to their adult size. So they're big in the sense that they completely fill the birth canal, but they're small relative to how large they're going to be in an adult. So despite pushing the limits of the birth canal, human brains are still much smaller at birth relative to their adult size than are those of other primates. They continue to grow after birth more than do the brains of other primates. 
That period of post postnatal brain growth, it lasts until about age seven, and it defines this developmental period we call childhood that does not occur in other great apes. Because brain growth is essential and it requires fat, this is one reason why human infants contain so much fat at birth. Human infants are actually as fat or fatter than baby elephant seals at birth. So to summarize, upright posture, which evolved four to seven million years ago, along with rapid long distance pursuit of prey, which evolved about two to three million years ago, led to a remodeling of the pelvis, which constrained size at birth, primarily size of the cranium and thus of the brain. Selection to increase infant size at birth is being balanced by selection acting through maternal mortality in childbirth. There are trade-offs between the health and the development of the infant and the survival of the infant and the mother. These morphological constraints have contributed to the evolution of the uniquely long human childhood during which the brain grows to adult size. 